All right, today we're gonna to take a look at a pretty common design feature. And in fact, uh, Rolando Beca asked me to explain specifically how the lines ended up in this grid on my website. Now, I actually have not designed this myself. Um, shout out to the Ghost team. This is one of their templates. So I thought this was a perfect opportunity to explore First of all, how to do this inner grid line thing, because that is, it's a cool design feature. And it's a little bit different because it's not a, like a full, perfect lined grid, like all the way down, no breaks or anything. So let's dive into our demo so that we can see how this is working. So we can see this is kind of the classic way to solve this problem. And the way that I did this, if we pop over to the code, all I've done is I've got my, my, this is my just borders that is for this specific example. All it is is a, a grid of three columns and then there's a gap of, of two rem uh, between each of those cards. And then we've got our, our content card and the border right, I'm putting a border on the right side of each of those cards. And then the way that I make it so that it's only the, the inner border is we're gonna put the last child is just going to be border zero. So if we look at the HTML, this is, a, it will look a little bit weird. I'm using a Django template so that I could just quickly um, repeat content here. But all it is, is we've got our card. We've got the grid system right here. And this card is going to have a border on its right. And then it's going to repeat this three times. And the very last card in this just borders container here is going to have no border. It's going to be forced to have no border on the right. So let's go back over here. This is how that looks. Pretty nice. It's not quite what we've got on this site right over here. And I'll show you why this kind of breaks down because <laughs> um, it works right now as it is, but the problem is it's not very flexible. And so if we wanted to some have something that's a little bit more works in a little bit more cases with maybe real content. What we're going to do is I'm going to go back over here. Let's change it to just, let's say we, we have five. Maybe our CMS is, you know, allows you to add more, um, more of these cards. So if we go back here and refresh, now we can see where this starts to, to break down because we have our inner borders just fine between these two. Same with this one, but then wait, this card has a border on the right side and that's not what we wanted but you can see this is that last child this very last one so that's the one that's losing the border and so if we wanted to make it so that it truly had just the inner borders and not any of the outside borders that's what we're gonna have to look at as far as like getting this to be a little bit more robust and that's what they've done on this website so let's check it out all right so I have another demo up here out how we can re replicate what we see on this grid with the inner borders onto this one uh, without all the problems that we just saw on the previous example. So I'm gonna go over to the code and we can see we have a new new class name called inner borders and um, it's basically all gonna be the same kind of thing. It's just a card of, of content, right? We can head over to our CSS. Now I am using SAS for this example, so that's why I'm using this and, and it's all nested. So if I wanted this to be normal CSS, all you have to do is take this top CSS class and then grab each one of these. And every time there's an ampersand, we're just gonna add this like that. So this first line would actually be like this. So that's the exact same thing in just plain old CSS as this line right here. So that's how you can tell that apart if you're not used to SAS. We have a, a another grid. It's a three column grid. The, I did add this grid gap here so that we could just play with the, the gap, the spacing between cards a little bit easier, just having it up here in this custom property. That way I can just make a quick change and if it's referenced somewhere else, then it will change everywhere, uh, wherever it is referenced like this. So that's about it. And we've got our NDT card. Those are the, the cards in each of our um, columns. 
And then we've got some hints here of what we need to do to get this to work. So the first thing we want to do is actually we can take a look at the developer tools using the developer tools. Um, I'm going to right click and click inspect and it pulls up this developer tools and we can kind of see what they've done to get this effect. If I'm, I'm looking at the, the grid right now, this is their, their grid class and I can see we've got our row gap. Um, we've got a grid gap, we've got overflow hidden. So there's uh, most of this stuff is already what we have. So let's try and see where we can find those borders. So I'm going to click on one of these articles and we still aren't really seeing anything. So if I open this up, here's where we see those before and after pseudo classes. And that's kind of why I had those um, stubbed out in the CSS. We're going to take a look at what this in the before and we can see we've got some interesting stuff going on right here. So we can just copy this out so that we can kind of see what's going on. All right, so we've stolen those those first styles and the one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to change this to just be red so that we can kind of see what's going on here. And then you'll notice that I had already kind of stolen their their naming convention for this grid gap. And so what this is saying is um, on the before and the after, we're going to position something on the left, uh, which is going to be negative half of whatever this grid gap is. So in this case, it'd be negative 1.5 rem. So if I hit save and we go back to our grid, refresh, we can see nothing seems to have changed. So let's take a look right here. So we can see when I hover over the before, it is clear outside of the the margin, the 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 actual grid um, border. So you can see if I highlight highlight over the grid, you can see that when I go back over to the before, it's a little bit off to the left, and that's partially because of this. So if we turn that off, we can see it now. It's aligning with the left corner. All right, so we're still not really getting anywhere. So let's go back to our source code here. We've got our before, and we've already taken these styles over here. And what we want to do is figure out what is this before actually doing, right? So if we look at where it's highlighting up at the top, we can see it is kind of highlighting uh, like a border top. So that's not quite what we're trying to do. We're trying to look at those inner borders, right? So let's look at what the after is. And we can see with this one, it seems to be out of view. And so let's crack open another one, another one of these cards. And again, the before is on top of the card. And then if we look at the after, that is the border. And so what we're going to do is we're going to scrape this right here. And, and then let's go back to our code. We're going to put this in the after. So what are we doing right here? We're setting it as a height of 100%. So it's going to span the whole height of that whole card. We're going to place it at the top. And one thing to note is the way I've structured this is all of the before and afters for these cards. Um, we're getting rid of the content. We don't need this um, to have extra content, but you do need this line uh, in order to use your before and after. And then we've we've got it positioned absolute. And, and so all of all of the before and afters are going to be inheriting those same styles. They're going to be using those same styles. Um, and that's where we just modify them if we need to right here. Otherwise, we're just borrowing the exact same thing. So this is where we kind of like make some adjustments, do some some tweaks here uh, to, to the basic gist of what our borders are. And so uh, we're going to place this at the very top and I'm going to make it a width of one pixel. So that gives you a little bit of a clue as to what is coming. So if we go back over to our Chrome, and refresh. Ah, there we go. Now we're starting to see our borders. You can tell though, we have the same kind of problem as before where we've got a border this time on the left side. So there actually is a pretty clever solution to this. And it's, it's kind of, uh, it's, it's a little different actually. I'm, uh, I don't know that I've seen this necessarily before, but if we'll notice, we want to get rid of the borders on the outside of our grid right? 
So one easy way to do that is actually to just set the overflow to be hidden on our grid. This is our grid class. So if I hit save and we go back over and refresh, we can see now the, all of those borders are hidden and it doesn't actually matter if it was on the right or the left. Um, we can take a look at the code right here. So we can see that our before is still there. It's still technically intact for our farthest left card, but it is outside of the boundaries of the grid. So it's gonna be hidden. And that's kind of a clever way to do it. Um, everything else is is done um, basically because now we have our inside borders between each card um, they are dynamically going to be set in the middle of each card column because we have this nifty little grid gap right here so if our grid gap is 3 rem and we've set this gap for our grid so that there's three rem um, on all sides of the card. Now uh, we go back down here and we're, we're saying, hey, put all of our borders on the left, cut it in half, and then also make it negative so that it goes shifts to the left uh, by half of that space. That's how we're perfectly aligning those borders to go between that space. And the cool thing is too, right here, we could change this to maybe something a little bit closer together. So if I hit save, go back and refresh, you can see now the cards are sitting just a little bit tighter together, but the border is still perfectly in the center of that gap, uh, which is pretty cool. And so if we go back here, I'm just going to reset this. Um, the last thing that we can do is we can actually do the same thing with the border on top of the cards, because if we go back over to our page here, we can see we actually have a continuous line on top that goes all the way across the row of cards and it aligns. It's so the, the line hits that card edge um, and then it spans all the way across without any gaps. So let's see how they did that. So what we're going to do, refresh, get those cards back and we're going to treat the before pseudo element now. And so if we go back in here, you'll notice on the after pseudo element, we have our width of one, but this time we want a height of one pixel because it is now, um, we're drawing it from the top down instead of um, from the left, basically. So we've got a height. This time it'll be similar to this. So I'm going to copy this down, but this is going to go to the right. And then there's one more thing we have to account for, which is the top and it's all, and, and both of these are going to be the same value. So what we're doing right here, we're saying get half of the grid gap, right? And make it negative. Um, so push it to the right and then also to the, to the top. So let's check out what that does. So if I hit refresh, now you can see we've got our inner border that goes on the top side of those cards. If I inspect our element here, we're going to see that this before, so this before is spanning the width of the card. And again, that overflow hidden on our grid. So if we go up here and we're going to take this off, you can see it actually goes beyond the card border. Um, but as long as that is on, it's going to, to line up perfectly with the side of the card. And so it doesn't extend past. And the reason why it has no gaps in it is because we've pushed it to the right. So if I go back onto our pseudo element, we've got our right declaration right here. And what's happening is that when we have the right, it's going all the way to meet the same distance as our inner vertical lines. Uh, it's going to go all the way to that point and then stop. And then the next card is already going to start at that leftmost point and then again overlap 
uh, and that's why you can actually see when there are five cards it does do a little bit of a an overhang on this last card um, so that is something to be aware of but that is how they did this grid with some lines that are broken some that are continuous and all of the lines stop outside of the border of that that grid container so it is a really nice one for perfect uh, grids once you have a full grid where you've got plenty of content there's not going to be one that is straggling this is a, a great solution so that's the only other potential issue um, so let's take a look at what we can do if we wanted to have those gaps maybe um, on the on that horizontal line as well so if instead of having this go to the right um, by half of the grid gap what if it was just zero let's go back here and now we can see this is kind of where it gets tricky the border is now ending at the right border of the the card but you can see it still is extending on the left side so if we wanted to fix that we can go ahead and just steal this left we're going to change this so that it doesn't start on on half of the grid gap we're gonna start at zero so go back to Chrome refresh and now we can see it's going to start at the edge of the card it's going to go all the way to the right edge of the card and then it's going to stop so there you go that's how you would accomplish something like this system of inner borders for cards that share a border this is a little bit more robust and um, it's it looks pretty nice and you can of course change the color it doesn't have to be red uh, we can we can make any adjustments we need with with the math or with the the um, styles of course and and make this unique to you so go ahead and take this i'd love to, to know what you end up making with this so thanks for exploring this with me and we'll see you around on the next video